by doing that. Yay, very cool. You can make dotted lines. Exciting. There we go. Okay, now we're not done. We've done the first two things. We've graphed and we've decided dotted or solid, but now we have to figure out where to shade. How do you figure out where to shade? There's actually three regions here. There's between, up above, and below. How do you decide? What do you do? Yeah. Since it's saying on um, Y is between, so between. you would shade between, right? You could do that, but you could also test a point, which is the same thing as what you just said. I'm just saying it a little differently. What's a great point to test that I've told you to test all the time? Zero, zero. What's the y value at zero, zero? Is zero between negative five and five? So you shade between. There you go. Done. So this is a great way to transition into compound inequalities. We did not specifically go over compound inequalities. Compound inequalities, you're wrapping multiple inequalities and finding out where they in intersect if it's an and statement or where they union if it's a or statement. So there's two things to graph here. So let's look at 27. What's the first thing we need to graph? This. X plus Y is greater than what? Negative 5. So we need to graph this. So if we're going to graph that, what's that first step I told you when you're graphing inequalities? Graph the... No, graph the... What's the first step? Graph the line. Yeah. So you're graphing the equation x plus y is equal to negative 5. If I want to graph that, what's a really easy way to graph that one? What form is it in? And what do you find if you're trying to graph standard form? What's the really nice thing to do? Standard form, when you're graphing things that are in standard form, what are the easy things to find? The x and y intercepts. The x intercept is when y is 0. The y intercept is when x is 0. What's the x intercept? No. Negative 5, comma, 0. So here it is. Negative 5, comma, 0. There's the x-intercept. How do you figure out what the y-intercept is? X is 0, which means y is what? So the point would be 0, comma, negative 5. I like it when you guys say the actual points. So both intercepts. So what do you do once you have the two intercepts? You connect them. Right, exactly. So I'll connect these two right here. Now you decide what's... Is it dotted or solid? It's dotted. So what do you do? You go boom, that goes away, that goes away, that goes away. Great. So now you have to figure out what. Now what? So graph the line, decide if it's solid or dotted, and then what? Shade. So what What do we do to shade? We need to, do, we need to what? Which is a great point to test. Why can, we, why can we use 0, 0 as a point to test? Why can we use it? Because the line, it's not on the line. Correct. So let's test 0, 0 into the inequality. Is 0 plus 0 greater than negative 5? Yes. Yes, it is. So what do we do? Do we shade above or below, therefore? We shade above. So let's shade above. So that right there is exactly the same as what we did yesterday. You graph the line, you decide whether it's dotted or solid, and then you pick a point to test. If you can use 0, 0, use it. If not, pick a different point. That's easy. Now it says, and... This is true. So we need to graph y is less than negative 2. What's the first step in shading? What's the first step? Make the line. Now what? Let's. I can use this color so we actually have comments. It's a horizontal line at what? At negative 2. 0, comma, I like that. At 0, comma, negative 2. So where do we put that? So negative 2 is right about, let's say, right there. So what do we put there? We put a horizontal line. And is it dotted or solid? Did I do that correctly? It's dotted because it's strictly less than... Now we have to decide what side we shade on. How do we decide what side we shade on? Begins with a T. Test. Oh, test a point. What point do we like to test? Ah, let's check. Is zero less than negative two? No, it's not. So do we shade above or below? Below. So we shade below the purple line. So if we shade below the purple line, we don't have a lot of colors on there. But what does this statement say? What is it joined by? And, so where are both true? Where are both true? Exactly, so they are both true, and I guess I'll use, uh, I've used all the colors now, except green I've used, purple I've used, blue I've used, and yellow. There are, oh, there are more? Oh, right there? Ooh, there we go. Orange. So where do they overlap? Right there, exactly, exactly. They overlap in the middle between the two between the two. I have a question. That would be the answer. The, 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 the orange shaded region would be the answer. Correct. The orange shaded region would be the answer. Where, where are they both true? Does the, answer, does the answer to this include the dotted lines? 
Yes, because do they overlap on the dotted lines? No, they don't overlap on the dotted lines. They don't. Um, if if I change that to an or statement, what's the only thing that changes about the answer? It's all of it. So the only thing that would change, except for this piece right there, exactly. So if you did the or statement, I got to turn that back onto the right eraser. Sorry. Um, if you changed it just to being an or statement, it would just be all of the shaded parts, regardless of if it overlaps or not. The only thing that changes when it's and is where does it overlap? That's all that changes. Wait. Graph the line. So what line is that? That's y equals x. It's the line y equals x. Can you graph that? How do, what's, what's the slope of that line? Uh, and the colors are now all messy. So you need to graph y equals x. What's the one intercept for that function? Also called the origin. So you know that this has right there 0, 0. What's the slope of that line? Positive 1. So you go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. You should just off the top of your head know that it's going to look like that. Is this dotted or solid, Gabby? Solid. Why? Correct. So you make it dotted. And now you need to figure out which side to shade. Can you use 0, 0 on this one? No. Can you use 1, 1? No, you can't. You can't use 1, 1. Because look, is 1, 1 on the line too? So what point should I use? You could use 2, 7, or you could use something. You don't have to make it any bigger than is absolutely necessary. Make it small. Like, for example, I'll give you an idea. How about this point right here? You could, but make it easier than that. Ready? 2, 0. Is that definitely not on the line? Definitely. So plug in 2, 0 here. Uh, this, the 2 is the x value, and the 0 is the so y, y value. So is, is 0 less, less than 2? Yeah. So what side do I shade? Bottom. You shade the bottom part. Exactly. Boom. Shade lightly so I can read all the rest. Done. That's it. The notation for relations, we're going to have sets of points that do see before, x and y. How many people see the word independent and dependent? The reason they are labeled as such is we like to write functions such that you plug in x values and you get out what? y values. Arbitrarily, when someone was first doing this kind of math, could it have been reversed and the person could have put y? Sure. It's an arbitrary choice. But the way we write it, the first variable is the x, and the second is the y. The first one is independent. You can be you want in the domain, and you get out the dependent variable. Why is it called dependent? Because y is dependent on x. Y is dependent on x. Exactly. So how can you identify relations? Well, what did I tell you a relation was? Any set of ordered pairs. Any set of ordered pairs. So give me two numbers. Any two numbers. Six, five. Just yell out numbers. Yell out numbers. Yell out another number. There you go. Here's some numbers right here. If I were to write these points out as a set, as a set, meaning the set of these points, so 6, 5 is the first one, 7, 24 is the second one, 9, 2 is the third, and 9, 51, is that a relation? Yeah. yeah. It's a set of ordered pairs. There's a first and a second number. If I change this to 5, 6, does that mean a different point? Yes. yes. Order means the order matters. You stand up. Stand up. Stand up. No sitting. Stand up. Here we go. You're standing. You're standing. You're standing. If you can't see, move to a place where you can. See if the board that is, not out the window. So what about this, though? So again, a, a relation could look like that. You know what else a relation could look like? That right there, all those points. How many points are on this squiggly line? A lot of infinite, an infinite number of them. Billions, trillions of them, right? Is this a relation? Yeah. It is. Because if I were to list all these out, they would represent a set of ordered and pairs. Also, they keep going. You don't know what it's going to do, but that can be a relation. Here's the thing, though. Are we looking at things that look like that crazy squiggly line? No, because that right there is a relation, but it is not a function. What, are, what is a function? A function is a relation, and what's interesting about math books sometimes is they start with like those conflicting ways of saying It's important that you know what these words mean now. A function is a relation for which each value of the first component of the ordered pairs, there is exactly one value of the second. There's exactly one value of the second. There's lots of different for 
There's lots of different ways. So don't say anything out loud yet. Don't say anything out loud yet. So for this one right here, let's take a look. Is this a relation? Yes. yes. Why? The functions are all in order. Of sides. It's a set of ordered pairs. This is a relation because it's a set of ordered pairs. The question is, is this a function? Let's just look at what it says. 1 goes to 2, negative 2 goes to 4, and then 3 goes to negative 1. Yes. It is a function because every single x has a y. Uh, every single x has a what? Y. Has a y value. But let's look at what it said here. This is really important here. Look at what it said. For each value of the first component, there is exactly one value of the second component. What that means, another way that this, another way to translate that, each x value can only point at one y value. Each x value can point at one y value. So let's look at this set right here. Again, is this a relation? Yeah, it's a set of ordered pairs. Each x value, does it point to just one y value? Yes. Let's say I change this just a little bit. Let's say I went, okay, get rid of that, comma, uh, let's say uh, six comma negative one. No. Ah, careful, careful, this is what you need to think about. What did I say? Each x value can go to one y value. Does each x value still go to one y value? No. Yes, it does. One goes to two, negative two goes to four, three goes to negative one, six goes to negative one. Does each x value go to one y value? Yes. Oh, okay. Does each x value go to? Yes, yes it does. Yeah, I there are yes. <laughs> Sorry, not what I saw that. What you said. I thought so, you had four. Sorry, there's a lot of people talking at the same time. I'm trying to navigate it. Now let's change it though. So th is this okay? Is this still a function? Yeah, that's still a function. Let's say instead, let's say instead that I changed it this way. Let's say it went like this. Dun 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 dun, dun and I said, uh, how about three comma four? No. Is that a function? No. Both of these threes point to different. No. Stop for one sec. These, this x value, it's the same x value right here. It goes to how many different, how many y values? Two of them. Three goes to negative one, and three goes to four. Okay, Gabby, I really need you to pause for a second. I really like the enthusiasm, but I need to finish my sentences so that everybody can have a little bit more time. Okay, pause, okay? I love the energy. Please pause over here. You can have different x values go to the same y values. Sedea, you can have different x values go to the same y value, and you have the same x value go to different y values. No. Everybody yes, your question, Gabby. Is that one a function? Oh, it's a relation, right? Is it a function? Take a look at it. Don't say it out loud. Is the following. Negative two. Are there any other negative twos in there? Okay, no. Are there any other negative ones? No. Any other zeros? Any other ones? No. Nope, they're not. Can you repeat y values? Oh, sure you can. But can the same x value point to two different y values? No. What about this one right here? Not a function. Why? No, it's fine. I asked it to the class. It's not. Why? That goes to two different y values. Exactly. If I asked you, is this a function, you would say, this is not a function. If I asked you why, you'd say exactly what you just said. It is not a function because the same x value, negative 2, goes to two different y values, 1 and 0. Exactly. Look. Nice. Okay. Sometimes you see functions written like this, these blob patterns. So it's the same idea. It's the exact same. What? Exactly. X value, Y value. X value, Y value. X value, Y value. It's easier when you have these arrows to see if it's a function or not. Is this a function? Over here. No, because you have negative two going to two different Y value. This is the same as what we just looked at. Yes, Sarah. So it would be the same as a point? Yeah, this is just another way. I'll call this, I, I, what do I want to call a blob notation? I might ask, right? Create a blob notation. It's not, a, it's not something that's that common, it's just a great way of visualizing what's going on. The relation is the arrow, really. The, the collection of the points need those arrows to be a relation. Exactly. We could graph them. We could graph them. This set, you could look at the values here 1, 2, negative 3, 4, 3. Is this a function? It is a function. Do, does any x value go to more than one y value? No, it is a function. Yes. That's not? Yeah. Exactly. So let me add a point in. How about this? 3, comma, 
I don't know, uh, 4. If I graph 3, 4, where's that going to be? It's going to be right here, correct? Does everybody see that? This collection right here, is that a function? No, this is not a function. And we know it's not a function because 3 is going to negative 1 and 3 is going to 4. It's going to two different ones. There's a visual test, though. What do you know? So which two, which two points are the problem? These two points are the problem, right? What do you notice about when you look at the graph? They're in the same vertical line. So can you have points on the same vertical line? No. No, you can't. Okay. Is that a function? Y equals 2x? Absolutely. It absolutely is. Go ahead, Sarah. Fiction before, that's a function machine. Mm -hmm. The idea of a function is you throw a number into the machine and it does stuff to it. It might double it, it might triple it, it might square it, and then it pumps out an ex like an exported number of y. I just wanted to make sure I included it. I like drawing the machines sometimes. My drawing of gears is getting better over the years. B number two? Is not in the domain. So say that the positive way. The domain is the set of all real numbers that can be. Set of all input values. These are all the numbers that you're allowed to plug into the function. And you usually find it by finding all the things you can't plug in and taking those away. Yeah. Taking those away. So, if the domain is the set of all input values, what's the range? One. Set of what? Well, nope. Values. Try it differently. Oh, yeah. I... You need to change one word from the... Yeah, what's the other word? <laughs> set of all output values. The set of all output values. The set of all output values. Exactly. All real numbers. Shadow method is fun. I like that. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. If I were to shine a light, yeah. Be, there's a couple ways. You could say interval notation. What, what's another way to say that? All real numbers, and you can also do it as this. They all mean the same thing. Those are all the same. The double R thing is great. give you four points. Can someone tell me the domain real quick? Yeah. What's the domain? Raise your hand. Who can tell me the domain? What's the domain? Oh, no. These are the only parts of this. Oh, this, is not a, this is not a line. These are the only elements. These four points. Three, four, six. Done. What's the range? Someone else. What's the range? Go. Yes. So if I gave you this question and I said, what's the domain? You would say three, four, six. What's the range? Negative one, two, five, and eight. That's what you would say. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But you need to, it's, absolutely. But here's the thing. Conceptually, you need to, as long as you understand conceptually what domain is, and conceptual what range is, the search doesn't change. Gabby came up with something that's going to be a huge thing. We're going to, instead of trying to find, usually moving forward in this class, instead of, it's very rare that we get to just list the elements like that. Usually we have to search for what the domain is by finding out what it can't be. Based on, we're not there yet, but I'll give you the preview. What are the two things we don't like to do in math? I'll give you a hint. One over. We don't like that, right? I mean, things that actually break us. That's not defined, right? And we can't do square roots of. So those are the two things we get to avoid. We're not there yet, but we, we're going to be. Okay? What about here? What's the domain of this function right here? 89, 88, 78, commas. What's the range of B? Done. What about that one? Is that a function? It is. What type of line is that? It's a, it's a horizontal line at y equals. Is that a function? Sure is. It sure is. Ah, but what about pictures here? We want to get to that test you were you already figured out for yourself. Is this a function? No, because is there a vertical line that passes through more than one point? Yes. There's a lot of them. You, that's awesome. The y-axis. Done. What about here? Is this a function? It is. Are there any vertical lines that I can draw that pass through more than one of them? Nope. So this is okay. And this one is not okay. I'm not making judgment values here. What about C and D? Is C a function? Sure is. What about D? 
It is. Absolutely. So it's okay for it to bend, right? It just can't bend over itself. Over, it can't like bend over to the side. X can't point to two different Y values. This is what it says. If every vertical line intersects the graph of a relation in no more than one point, then the relation is a function. Remember what I started off with? Here are relations and what lives inside the set of relations? Functions. You need to remember that. That's important. So here are some graphs for you. Oh look, these are the four we just looked at. We decided function, not function, function, function. Exciting. Okay, I'm going to give a better one for you here. Let's start chatting right here. What were those two illegal things that we don't want to have happen? Oh, 1 over 0 and square root of negative, right? This function will be defined whenever this quantity is what? By its what? Well, not by itself, but can it be negative? No. So we want this to be what? What? Want to be what? Positive. No, 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 no. Just go with me first. Don't add anything yet. You want that to be positive. You want to know when is it positive. Can someone tell me what the inequality is that we need to solve? If I want to know when this is positive, what inequality do I need to solve, Sarah? We want to know when 2x minus 1 is what? What's another way of saying positive? Greater than 0. Ah, can we work on this now? Now what do we do to both sides? 2x is greater than what? 1. x is greater than? 1 half. This right here is the domain. The last thing we need to test, because here's what happens. Can you do 1 half? What's 2 times 1 half? 1. What's 1 minus 1? Why not? Can you do the square root of zero? This is what it looks like. It starts at a half, and it looks like this. There's the graph. Is the function defined to the left of a half? No. No, it's not. What's the range? I gave you the picture. What's the range of that function? You can look at the picture and should be able to tell me the range. Yeah. Zero to infinity. Does it include, does it include zero, Gabby? It does include it. Perfect. Now, why isn't it negative? Why isn't the range negative? No. No, the function. Oh, no, no, no. Here. No. Where's the yeah. shadow? It's only up here, right? If you were to shine the light in the sun, it's only up here. So the range is that. Okay, so you can't have the square root of a negative number. What's the other illegal thing you're not allowed to do? Yeah, so let's say I gave you this function. f of x is equal to 1 over x. Anybody want to guess what the domain is? What's the only number you can't plug in? Zero. So what's the, what are all the numbers that you can plug in? Zero. More than that. Zero. Except Zero. all real numbers except zero. zero. That's your domain. Can you plug in negative numbers into that? Sure. Can you plug in zero? No. You can plug in any real number except for zero. So what are the, again, what are the two illegal things you don't want to happen? One over zero and? We don't like that. We want to avoid these things. Avoid. And spell avoid properly. Okay. By yourself, see if you can figure out what's the domain of that function right there. Tell me what the domain is. Don't say it out loud, but find me the domain. What inequality do I need to set up? What's the inequality? 3x plus 2 has to be greater than what? Can it be equal to 0? Mm -hmm. So what do I do to both sides? Mm -hmm. So 3x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So x is greater than or equal to what? This is your domain. That's it. x greater than negative 2 thirds. Perfect. What happens if you plug in something less than negative 2 thirds? This becomes what? And we don't like that, do we? You don't. Okay. If I were to give you a picture of this, this is what it looks like. Is this a function? No. Why not? It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Exactly. You could just say today, because say, oh, here's a vertical line, crosses two points. Therefore, what? 
not a function. Exactly. Very 